Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm and this is your GIS News for August 28. The Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation, KSAC, is looking to crack down on businesses that fail to pay their trade license fees and collect some $65 million in annual lost revenue. Kingston's Mayor Angela Brownberg says the council will be launching its 2012 trade license compliance initiative on September 3 to ultimately improve the compliance rate among businesses that are required to pay trade licenses. Currently, we are collecting $10 million annually. The data we have suggests that if appropriate strategies are put in place and if these are efficiently managed and adequately sustained, income from trade licenses can be increased to an estimated $75 million per annum. With the support of the police, the KSAC is partnering with the Tax Administration of Jamaica to launch the initiative beginning in the downtown district. The Education Ministry says all schools have received funds to facilitate the start of the new academic year next week. Acting Chief Education Officer in the Ministry, Clement Radcliffe, says over $1 billion was given to secondary, primary and infant schools to cover tuition fees and maintenance grants. At this time, we have been able to provide our high schools with a total of $1.384 billion. We have been able to provide our primary schools with $150 seven million seven hundred and seventy three thousand dollars mr radcliffe was addressing a recent gis think tank he said while the ministry had provided what it could it was still important for parents to pay their auxiliary fees to help the school's operations meanwhile the distribution of items for the cooked lunch component of the school feeding program begins this week Director of the program, Helen Robertson, says Region 1 schools can collect their food items as of this Wednesday at the warehouse in Kingston, while haulage contractors will begin deliveries to other regions as of September 4. In the meantime, Mrs. Robertson is reminding schools that the nutrition snacks items should be sold for $2. Some 175,000 students will receive cooked lunches this school year, while 136,000 will benefit from the nutrition component. There is also a provision for 210,000 beneficiaries on the path, including 4,000 children in infant schools. Work has resumed on several road projects on the northern end of the island, being executed under the Jamaica Development Infrastructure Program, JDIP. Others are set to start over the next two weeks. The projects in St. Anne, Trelawney, St. James and Hanover were stalled due to disagreements between subcontractors and the main contractor, China Harbour Engineering Company. State Minister for Transport, Works and Housing, Richard Azan, says the parties ironed out their differences following meetings with his office and the National Works Agency. We receive calls, we receive letters from the Citizen Association and the citizens complaining about the dust there and so forth and for them to agree to restart and move in re re with speed, I must say that I have to really thank them and thank the citizens for holding out so long. Meanwhile, farmers in Mason River and the surrounding areas can now transport their goods in comfort following the recent opening of the Mason River to Johnsville Farm Road. The roadway, which was damaged in 2008 during Tropical Storm Gustave, was rehabilitated under the Gustave Agricultural Rehabilitation Project, GARP. Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Roger Clark says such a move will have a direct benefit to farmers and the economy of the country. This is one of the real breadbasket areas of the country. And this kind of encouragement will always help our farmers to up the ante as far as their production goes. The rehabilitation project was done in partnership with the USAID, the Agriculture Ministry and the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA. And finally, Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson has been tapped to chair the Council of Social and Economic Development COSOD in CARICOM. The minister will also serve as chairperson of the newly formed Caribbean Regional Public Health Agency. CARFA, as it's called, represents a consolidation of the programs of five regional health institutions into one Caribbean body and is to begin operation in January 2013. Dr. Ferguson says Jamaica's chairmanship of the body comes at a critical juncture and is important in carrying forward not just the Jamaican but also the Caribbean agenda. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Thank you for watching.